Yeah. We're going to do the upside down moose hair fly. Okay. So and this one here is the... Uh, that's the beauty. Uh, that was devised by Rocky Shalstead back in uh, the mid-50s. Mm -hmm. uh, Rocky was living and working out in central Newfoundland at the time, and uh, he worked it out for the Great Rattling Brook area. Uh, it picked up in favor on the west coast, and I don't know why it fell out of favor here, because I'll tell you that that is a fantastic design. It's See, what will happen is if you turn the fly back over, uh, uh, what you'll see is that it will ride on a moose hair, Oh, yes. And almost make a hitch, you know, like a, a riffling hitch without using a hitch. Now, on larger flies, uh, size hooks uh, like that one there, you probably use a hitch on it, right? Sure. But it masks the, the hook itself, the hook and hook bend, so it would be good in, in low water. So, Rob, is this the only type of fly that uh, is upside down? We'll say I, haven't, I can't remember seeing any other flies with the uh, head on it. No, it's, uh, I've used a few. Uh, I've used it on the uh, Humber Orange and Taken Fish. Yeah. And and a couple other flies, but uh, it's a design, like I say, that uh, really never took off here like, it like I thought it w w would, you know? Yeah. But I'll guarantee you, I'll, I'm gonna be using that uh, design a lot more. I should have used it, like I said earlier, uh, before the show, okay. up in Labrador, because okay, I'm sure yeah. it would have killed them up there. I certainly would be uh, willing to try that. Yeah. Like I said, it makes a nice wake on the water. Oh, and deadly. On lake. Yep. Okay, so maybe uh, maybe we can get into it and, uh, yep. and probably get our list of materials of exactly what we're gonna want. Uh, we're tying this fly. We're tying this particular fly this yep. way. Okay, so the hook is a number four low water. Uh, the thread is a black uh, 3-0 monocord. The tag is fine oval silver tinsel. The tail is uh, black hackle fibers. The ribs are fine oval silver tinsel. The body is black seal fur. The wing is moose hair tied underneath the hook. The hackle is black colored, and the head itself is black. There we go. Okay, so let's get cracking. Okay, now you see I've got my hook my vise. Uh-huh. Pretty simple. Now, you haven't tied a fly before, and I guess you haven't no, seen sir. it up close, so no. what I'll show you just how it's done. You just pinch your thread between your forefinger and thumb, lay it across, and just make five or six wraps back. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, that is secured. All I do now is just cut, cut the tag in. Okay. Now. So I guess the first thing we're doing is building up a base or a body. I guess, is it, is it yep. the body? Uh, no, it's the underbody is what we're okay, going to be doing first. <coughs> Excuse me, I got, I got a cold. Every season after the season ends, I get a cold. Yes, the following year. Run down, see? Change, yeah, that's right. I'm gonna okay. Morning rises. I'm going to tie the tag material in just behind the return loop and parallel with it. Now you can see what happened there, right? Mm -hmm. It's right parallel with the, with the hook shank and it's covering up that, uh, that gape or cutoff point made by the return loop. Okay, so what are you? Scooping on there now. Huh? I got some Dave's Flex Cement. Okay. I use this in all my flies for the construction of the underbody and all that right there. Right up until I uh, finish off the head, right? Is that what gives it the durability, Rob? Or is that the oh, that's one of the, one of the aspects. Because I know I've heard many people talk about your flies, that they last quite a while, and I yeah. assume that's one of the... It is, yeah, it's one of the reasons. Now, I've gone to, back to a point in close, even terms with the thread, right to the hook point on this fly. And what I'll do is I'll reverse the flow of the thread and still edge to edge wrap forward for a few turns and then I'll make some wide space turns, right? Okay. And what I did there was I built up a little bit of thread for the, uh, for the tag. I'm gonna wrap around five or four or five turns of this material. And uh, I just spaced the turns wide space just to get the, the bobbin out of my way while I wrap the materials, right? Just give me a little bit of okay. room to work with. Wrapping forward towards the hook eye in nice, close, even, tight turns for about five or six turns. Okay. And reverse the flow of the thread until that thread meets the tinsel. And we just tie it off for two or three turns. Pretty simple. You make it look simple. I bet you can do it. <laughs> if John Von Allen can do it, you can do it. <laughs> well, this is true. Uh, well, we're going to give John a bag and one over now. Oh, yeah. He's out the show. Poor old John. I wonder how he's doing. He's doing pretty good. I, I was speaking to him there, uh, oh, a couple of weeks ago. Both of us were. Sure, actually. yeah. I see John he's, John's doing yeah, well. Yeah, he likes his job, and he... Wish him well with your sure. new, newest member of the family, too. Yeah. He wasn't doing much fishing this year. Uh, his wife had a baby, and I believe she was the roost, and John was <laughs> babysitting most of the time, I believe. <laughs> we're going to get ourselves in trouble. Well, now. you are. I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 you put me up to it. <laughs> I'm, 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 
Okay, we're going to put a tail in here of black hackle swabbers, and we're not going to go past the bend. Now, it's debatable, and I don't think Rocky put uh, a tail in, in this fly. Okay. It's de debatable if, if this adds anything to the fly itself, because once you turn that fly over and you look at from from the bottom, mm -hmm. as the fish sees it, it's all masked by the, uh, by the black moose here anyway. Okay, so you probably wouldn't see it is what you're saying, yeah? Yeah, but I always like to have a little tail on my fly, okay. you know? Sure. Okay, now we're going to tie in another section of... Uh, of tinsel, this is going to be our ribbing. So we got the tag and the tail done so far, right? Okay. So I noticed there's not a lot of materials for this particular fly. No, it's a very simple fly. So it's just, yeah. Okay. Great beginner fly. It tinsel. is, exactly, yeah. And again, you can put the wing in the, uh, the, the, the upright position, right? Mm -hmm. And you still got a fantastic sure, fly. Yeah. Okay, now what we're going to do here is we're going to bury some of the, the underbody materials, right? We're going to work our way up. and uh, fill in that return loop. Now, we don't really have to go all the way up on this fly, but I, I normally do that so that the materials, like the more surface that, uh, that the end or the butt materials are bound down, the less chance of it being pulled uh, pulled out, you know? Okay. Now, a lot of people would say, well, you're going through a lot of, uh, a lot of misery by just wrapping all the way up there, you know, it takes you a little longer to tie a fly and whatever. Now, I will be truthful in saying that my flies are a little bit more expensive than most, but you know, what's the, like I say, my, my philosophy is why tie a fly that's going to come apart? Well, you know? I mean, I, I guess that's any product, uh, you know, you pay for quality, I guess is the bottom line. You know, yep, the, yep. So if they're going to last and they're durable. I, I just went ahead of myself there just a minute ago, and yeah. uh, I, I started making a, a dubbing loop. And now we're going to put on the seals for body here, and what we've got to do is make a dubbing loop. So what I do is I take my thread, just lengthen a little bit, and just lay it over the top, you know, the bottom and hold on to that loop right here and just wrap back like this. And we've got a loop created, okay, right? Sure. So what I'll do here is bring my thread right up to around, around the head area, what's gonna be the head. And I'm gonna lay in some seals for in that loop. Now, on one side of the thread of the loop, I'll just dab on a bit of wax, right? Okay. And what happens here is I'll lay in some uh, seals for a substitute. As I, as we mentioned in the, in the last show, Gary, that you know seals for is getting pretty hard to get. You know. Yeah, yeah. So this substitute, it works well, the way. Oh, excellent. Uh, in fact, I like this better than seals. A little softer, and uh, it's more sparkly. And it's got the, the right look of seals for too. You know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of substitutes out there that are really dull in color, and I don't see any point of putting it on the hook. Because the old idea here is we're trying to pull that fish, I guess, so. Yeah, that's right. Now you see that the seals were laid in be between that uh, those two pieces of thread. Now I'm gonna just gonna twist it. And twist it and twist it. So what's, what's happening there is you're crea creating a rope. Yeah, oh, okay. And uh, the fur is being pinched in between those, uh, those two pieces of thread. And it can't be pulled out, can it? You know, I, I, you know, a lot of people just dump directly on the thread. Yeah. And that's pretty good with some softer furs, like uh, muskrat and beaver under fur and whatever. But to really get a, a nice, uh, durable dubbing, this is the way to do it. So you just work a little bit even. Yeah. Now, here I'll show you, too, is that you, you, you're not going in back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. No. Like that there. You're going in one direction at all times. So if you were going back and forth, you were twisting on, and then you're twisting yeah. off, and you don't want to do that. Feed the purpose. Yeah. Okay. And you don't have to do it a lot. I'm just doing this out here to smooth it out a bit, you know? And what we'll do now is we'll wrap that just like we would a, uh, a piece of wool or whatever, you know? Yeah. Now, I spoke to Rocky the other day, uh, Rocky Schulstead, and uh, I asked him, you know, the dressing of the fly. He said, Ronald, I said, sometimes I used flies and sometimes I used seals fur, depending on the mood I was in or, you know, yeah. what I thought would work the best. And, uh, I, I like flies on the smaller flies, you know, like, say, eights and tens and twelves. In fact, Rocky didn't use it much on, on, uh, on flies much larger, larger than hook size number, number eight. But I think you could uh, really get away with a, a six or a four low water if it was dressed heavily 
and I think uh, the seal spur would add to it because there's a little bit more resistance when it flies going okay. through the water, right? Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Okay, now what we'll do is we'll take five turns of ribbing. Now, the number of turns is up to you, but five is the customary number of turns. Uh, for that particular fly, you mean? Or for any rule? salmon fly, okay. as a rule. Okay. Now again, you can you can add or delete extra turns or oh. whatever like that. Uh, fishing conditions would dictate that, you know. Yeah, I'll make the fly a little better, I guess. Yeah. Now, know. what I usually do here, Gary, is I usually whip finish this off. One, two, three, four, with four wraps just to secure everything there. I'm not going to change threads or anything. I'm going to still use the same color thread and whatever. Okay. So we're, we're done up to that, that point. Okay, great. Okay, so maybe uh, we get back to our fly and uh, finish this off. Okay, we've only got a couple more steps to go, Gary, and uh, that is to put on a wing and a hackle. Now, on our previous example that we had tied, what I did there was I put on the hackle before I put on the wing. Now, it's collared, which means it's wrapped around, yeah. and I put the wing on after. Now, Rocky advises that I should put the hackle on after the wings, so that's what we're going to try. Okay, sure. Now, here we go. We'll take one turn. Doesn't matter. We've got it hitched off anyway. And tie it underneath, right? Now, I'm just going to build up a little bed for the moose hair wing. A bed of thread. A bed of thread. Fountain didn't know it. No, yes, I did. There we go. We've got some flex in it there. Now we're going to get some moose hair. Now that shouldn't be very hard to come by this time of year. <laughs> oh, no, hey. Yeah. Okay. I'll just fl flick out the old stub ends. And stack it up in the hair stacker. What you do is you put the butt ends up in the small container. Okay. And just lay them here. Most of I think it was all even, right? Oh God, it works. Yes, sir. Good. Like I said to John, and John has realized too. I mean, like the fly that's that's neater. If you got two flies the same, you know, two same patterns or whatever, and you've got a neat fly, and you've got a fly that's not so neat, that's carelessly tied or whatever, you're going to fish the fly that's neater because it looks better to you, and you're okay. going to fish it with more confidence. And that's a lot of times that's the key to catching that Atlantic salmon. Right? Okay. Okay. Another. Uh, main step in this fly, or another feature of this fly, should be that it should come right to the bend of the hook, but not past. So like right there, eh? Okay. And what we'll do is we're gonna lay down a lot of cement because moose hair is easy to pull out if it's not uh, not well cemented. I'm gonna lay it down. I'm gonna hold it up off the body and tie it in with four or five turns and then wrap back on the moose hair wing. Now, what, what, what this does right here is that it just secures a little better while I'm clipping out the butt ends. Okay. Uh, I'll undo those wraps now shortly. And clip it in as close as you can. Yeah, it just secures the wing so it doesn't shift around a lot, you know? And again, like you said, it makes for a much neater. Oh, yeah. Uh, neater fly, I guess we can. Yeah. Take okay, time one, to do that. two, three, four. Okay. Now we'll just bind down those butts, right? Now he liked to, he said, he liked to have this, you know, uh, covering at least half the hook shank so oh, it would be okay. rounded all over, right? Yeah, sure. And the way to do that is by doing, using your thumb, right? I'll just cover those butt ends. Now, there's nice firm pressure on that uh, that thread. Now, I, I suggested in the uh, dressing to use 3 oh thread. I'm using 6 oh which is finer, right? Okay. But I always use uh, a finer thread anyway. And once their, <coughs> excuse me, tires are get get used to time with the finer threads, they can go to it. So the 3 oh or the, the larger thread is easier to work with? Oh, yes. Uh, for, for the beginner, but the finer threads are, are, are more secure, it makes a more, more secure wind, and it makes a nice neat head and whatever, you know? Wow. 
No, I've got to put on a collared hackle here. And it looks a little pretty good there. Just take off the oil, strip out the oil fuzz off the bottom of the, uh, mm -hmm. of the hackle. And we're going to double this hackle. Uh, you just lay that over your forefinger with the dull side towards you. And then you just pull them to one side. What uh, this does, Gary, is that you, uh, uh, you you have all the hackle fibers going to one side, right? Uh -huh. And when you wrap, you don't have to make as many wraps of hackle to get the density of uh, fibers that you require. Okay, that makes sense. You have that on one side. Yep, and what happens is it also nice, makes it flows back nice, eh? Blends with the wing. Now, are these the things you'll find in a book, or are these the things that come to you? A lot of these things are, are just basic uh, fly tying staples, okay. right? Yeah. And uh, actually, this, is, this was an, uh, a British uh, invention or technique. Oh. They use with the old classic salmon flies, like the Mary Lodges and Jack Scotts mm -hmm. and whatever. A lot of body hackers on those flies. Okay, now I'll just clip out the hackle tip. Okay. And what I'll do is I'll just make four or five wraps of this hackle. Okay. And collar it around. Okay, that's starting to stand up pretty good there. Yep. But uh, what'll happen now in a second, Gary, is what I'm just going to brush all that back and it's going to blend right with the wing, huh? Okay, so I'll just take off some thread wraps and tie it off underneath. So I tied it off with four turns. Mm -hmm. and bind down the excess and just form a head. Just make it a little bit bulbous, hey? And there. Mm -hmm. Now what we gotta do here, we got one more step to do actually. Finish sawing this fly and that's to do with a whip finish. A whip finish? Yeah. Oh, okay, sure, yeah. It's a series of hitches, but you put them on and uh, Instead of drawing up tight on each hitch, yeah. you just put a series on. What happens there is you don't get all these knots, you know? Yes, it's kind of worn up. It's all whipped down, eh? Yeah. Oh, that came out pretty good, I think. Let's turn it over. Let's look at it this way. Yeah. That'll right. work out nice. Okay, looks good. Excellent. Yeah. I, I, I like that fly, I must say. I like the, the it was a good, uh, good design he's came up with there. Okay. 